Hey everybody, so we're back to nice sunny weather, back to shorts and t-shirts, um, bit windy though, so I decided to take the uh, weekend off since both days were kind of blown off, uh, but starting this midweek we've got a nice stretch of nice clean weather, so plan on doing some heavy hitting, and then the weekend it, we get another northern uh, front comes down. Not so cold, it still stays right around 70, but uh, this midweek we get right back to the 80s, so that's gonna be nice. So I think I figured I would do a different type of video today. Um, one of the things I'm doing is drawing out my hatch that just gets saturated with constant amounts of salt water from uh, loading my gear all the time. But I think I'm gonna do a year-end review, but just a little bit of a different uh, swing to it. Now, one of the common things now that we're one week into 2018 is to post a top fish video for 2017. Well, I caught a lot of fish and I've got way too much footage to cycle through, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. And besides, my top five fish are basically pilchards, ballyhoo, glass minnows, pinfish, and grunts, since those are the most important tools in my trade. So that would be kind of boring. But one thing I did think about was that I can kind of wrap up my year-end review of reviews, uh, basically items that I bought throughout this last year. And since it's the first time I'm doing it, some of the things are gonna be even older than that. And just kind of go through and just kind of give you an update on how they worked out, what I thought of them, and so forth. And just kind of get that out of the way and start the new year fresh. And here's a quick look at some of the things that we're going to be reviewing as part of my 2017 year end. All right, so let's get started. Let's start off with my rods and reels. Um, they're actually three and four years old, respectively. I run the Pen Conflict series. There's a new model out, so I use the last year's model, which has gone for like the last four years. Um, work really well. They've been very solid for me. Um, as you see, I fish a lot. However, probably year three, year four, I put in putting a lot of money into them, uh, maintenance and repairs. Um, they use pot metal gears, which is terrible. Um, that's probably the number one big issue with these reels. Uh, I do my reels and stuff, my, all my gear gets saturated in salt water because of the outboard and I, I run speeds on my kayak. So realistically, it's basically like every time you go fishing, you submerge your reel in salt water is basically what happens to these. But I'm doing that five days a week, basically. Uh, but like I said, I have to buy uh, tons of uh, spares, especially those pop metal gears because the corrosion builds up and then it binds up. And once it binds up, it deforms those gears or it, if you crank down on it, it'll chew those teeth up and then that reel is done. Uh, but I've been piecemealing these. Now I'm to the point where I'm piecemealing a bunch of odd parts on it and components on it. So it's becoming a bit of a hassle. Uh, this will probably be the last season for these reels and I'm gonna probably be switching to a different brand, different model. I won't be doing the conflicts. They went to this real space age rocket ship looking reels, uh, but still those pot metal gears. So I've got another um, manufactured model that I'm gonna be testing out. Uh, rods, kind of the same thing, but they've been a little bit more bulletproof. I run the Shimano Terramar and a Calico Jack as my kind of inshore rods. Uh, Shimano Terramar is super solid. I don't think anybody really has anything negative to say about them for a production rod, mass manufactured. Just very solid, works really good. And then the Calico Jack, super surprising. I just read a post on the Florida Sportsman where someone asked, uh, wait, what are you guys, your favorite inshore rods? And surprisingly, a lot, a lot of people said the Calico Jack is one of their go-to uh, rods. And that includes even the guide saying, yeah, it's an excellent customer rod, something that you can use and abuse, not worry about it. They're low cost, but they just work exceptional. I think uh, the Terramars did well as well. I think uh, Star Rods was probably the, the premier name that is used the most. But uh, very good rods. Again, uh, they're coming on three to four years respectively. And I'm buying lots of backup uh, guides since those are really starting to 
fail this last year or two. Um, I did make this deal DIY rod uh, tying machine, so that saved a lot. So I buy these for a dollar, two bucks, and then uh, versus spending 15 to have them professionally done. But that's the rods and reels. For the next review, it's these guys. Not the glasses, these are Costa Del Mar black fins, but actually the replacement lenses. These lenses are made by a company called Fuse Optics. Uh, I originally, my Costa Del Mar lenses got all scratched up and they're flaking off to the point when I was out chasing bait, I was like having to do these weird angles to try to like find a clear spot so I could see and to the point I was getting headaches when I was going fishing. Uh, Costa wanted like a hundred bucks to replace the lenses and that's how much I paid for the glasses themselves. I just screwed that. I uh, saw there was a few other companies that did uh, offered um, replacement lenses. I didn't know any of them, so I just gambled and then I cho chose this Fuse Optics. Uh, $35, they mail you the lenses. You just pop out the old ones, pop in the new ones. Uh, clarity was excellent. I tested them out, I could see fine, they worked good. I didn't have a lot of confidence in them. Basically, they're $35 versus $100. You kind of get what you paid for. But what I found out after using it and treating them the same way I did the Costas is I didn't get a mark on them. No scratches, no imperfections, no flaking, nothing so far. But I, I treat them just like I did before and where the Costas scratched, these haven't. So definitely a big thumbs up for these guys. So for the next review, it's this guy. Basically a headlamp. But this is kind of an SNR search and rescue quality. Uh, this is a black diamond icon. I think this is like two, maybe three years old. But I was going through those $20, $30 ones. I probably got a, at least 10 of those and that just kept failing after a couple months. And especially, and that wasn't even like taking them on the kayak and then salt water. So I finally broke down and dropped like, I think I spent 60 or $70 on these guys. But they're totally waterproof. They survive in the saltwater environment. Um, that's why I really was able to do a lot of uh, summer night fishing is because of these guys. And uh, they held up. They, I could rely on them. And uh, definitely way much better than keep trying to buy those cheap ones. Then one time you go out and you need your light and it doesn't work. That's horrible. So really good idea. Um, I don't think they make this model anymore. But... Just the, the, the quality of that side of it. Uh, Black Diamond's pretty good, so I give them a big thumbs up. Uh, the next one are these, um, my ratchet straps for strapping down my kayak. I actually did do a video about buying these for a specific reason. I was having a problem with these heads always corroding out and rusting because they get saturated when I put the kayak in the water and then uh, the problem I was having is that they would rust and that rust would pour down on the side of the car and it would stain my actual glass windows as well as the paint. And plus they would become not usable. So I invest in these. These are smart straps, but they're a aluminum bodied uh, frame. So they're corrosion resistant. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. And they're probably going to last a lifetime since they don't corrode. And they've worked out really well. All right, the next item is this, my PFD. Now this is a NRS, the Chinook. Now it may look odd from what you might normally see is because this is just, the color is all washed out. Usually they come in like a safety orange. I'm not sure what other colors, but uh, this thing has been out five, six days a week in salt water, full sun all the time. And uh, it still works perfect. I mean, the key parts of it is the zippers. All my zippers still work. All the clasps, clasps still work. All the attachments still work. So you really can't beat that. Uh, really good deal. I bought this used for like 50 bucks and it's been uh, perfect. Now for a little bit of electronics for you, my ultimate GoPro setup. So what I'm starting off with is the GoPro Hero 4 Black. So I get that top end uh, video quality. And the microphone is a waterproof microphone. It's the Sennheiser MKE-2 Elements. Totally waterproof, Sennheiser audio quality. And that's really what sets this system better than even the 5 and Hero 6 that are out now because you have the high quality, plus you have high audio where they might be able to do a little bit better in video quality, but in most cases, it's really not useful. 
but then they have audio, which is still that GoPro kind of crappy audio. I've also included a Polar Pro polarized lens, um, which will help out for the extreme sun we get out here in the Keys. The one negative factor is, is this lens, since it uses a standard glass lens, is uh, prone to uh, hazing from salt water. And even when you try to wipe off that salt water, it still dries with a thin glaze on there, which kind of numbs down the quality. Uh, also, I've added a uh, the backpack battery, the extended battery. Um, two reasons. One is that I no longer have to open up to put a second, uh, replace the battery. One charge gets me through the full day of fishing. And two, because of the case requirement for the uh, microchip for the uh, Sennheiser, is instead of the little foam piece that just kind of rattles around, the wiring kind of is just loose in there. With the battery pack, everything sits in there snugly, so I definitely don't have to worry about that issue anymore. But the biggest thing is that I could change the battery out, charge it, and so forth in the control environment of, um, of my home. My hands are clean, I'm dry, no salt water, no risk of the ocean around me, and I could put it all together without worrying about it. So a lot less risk in that regards, but basically the ultimate GoPro setup. Thumbs up. Now the next part actually is a low budget tips and tricks, and it kind of refers back to that issue that I was having with that polarized lens. Once that salt water gets on there, I totally wet and saturated in salt water. Uh, with the uh, GoPro, you can basically just hand wipe it and it'll dry fairly clear. But with that lens, you have to have it just saturated clean. And then even the um, fresh water will spot up and leave blotches on it. So what I've done is I've gone and bought these glass wipes, which are basically alcohol swabs. And then these I got at the Dollar General store and there are these packs of these small little Tupperware containers. And what I do is I take these guys out, stick them in this container, and I have a bunch of alcohol wipes that I could uh, wipe that lens, and that definitely cleans it and it dries clear. And in my uh, life vest, in my top pocket, I keep an empty one, so once I wiped it, Okay, I take that uh, used one and I put it in this empty container, seal it back up, and it lasts me all day versus I can't have it exposed anywhere else. I used to try to put it in this pocket without uh, anything but salt water got into it and it would just leave that uh, streak on the lens there. But that's resolved that issue. And these things will be great for any small stuff that you need to hold on to and keep uh, basically waterproof. Keeping up with the GoPro and the filming stuff, uh, more of the, the actually selfie stick, the, uh, I call it the cinematic stick, working out really good. Um, the key thing to that whole keeping things interesting, that cinematic style is angles, is really all it is. Lots of angles, chop up your video so it's not like this, just same scenery, blah, 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 which kind of tends to turn people off and get them bored where you have something new, a different angle, and it just keeps their mind busy trying to think about what's going on. So that's what I created this to help me do. And I'm actually still revising it. I think I'm gonna cut it probably a third of the way down and then cut that off to make it even shorter because with this length, I'm having problems to using it for that, uh, the trophy hold the fish shot because it's too long. And I just need it short enough to the point or long enough that I could hold it over the side to get those water shots. And I think I could cut off another foot of it and that makes it a lot more manageable. But the cinematic stick really help you out if you get a second camera or third camera or really want to get involved with all the cinematic style. The next piece is another camera. This is actually the Water Wolf. This is the 2.0 edition. Now this camera is the one that I utilize for those underwater shots of the lure of the bait and that fish coming up and roar. Okay. Again, super impactful, um, talk about cinematic style, and uh, you don't see a lot of these being used on YouTube. Uh, I kind of liken it to a drone. Um, it definitely gives you that odd type view that you don't normally see. It's very impactful. On the negative side, it's not something that you're gonna do tons of time with, so maybe a 10, 15 second impact, high impact, and you cut that into your videos and it's like, wow, very cool. And it takes you to that next level, but it's 10 or 15 seconds for a 
$100, $150 item there. But uh, like I said, it works really good. Another negative is that it's only useful if you have really good clear water. Um, Pre-Irma, QS, perfect for it. We have very clear, pristine waters. Uh, this worked out really well, I used it a lot. Post-Irma, with all that silt buildup, the cloudy waters, I just haven't used it because of that. Hopefully this spring things will clean, clean up and stay clean and then I'll get back to using this. Now, getting back to some fishing, the next item is this. Just a nice little four inch soft plastic, old school, old school basically designed like a pilchard. Uh, very plain and boring. Uh, got these from Jose who got me like a bin full of about 15 uh, pounds of just assorted plastics. Old retired uh, charter captain ended up selling them all this stuff. And these guys were in there and they're probably 10 year old design, just super old school, but I knew they would work and I've been just slaying the fish with this specific soft plastic. I use really nothing else. What the key though is, is that I also thought, and I thought I would really kill the big fish with this one, which is a five inch, same style paddle tail, bigger baits, bigger fish. And then I also had this little guy, which is basically, two and a half, two and three quarter inch. Now, what was odd is in that out of those three, that, that four inch one catches everything, small to super big, okay? And I've gone to the big one thinking I would just target and catch big fish, not so much, okay? This one fished the same on one big, one medium size there. This medium one would get hit all day from small to big fish. Whereas this big one would get the occasional bite, but nothing close compared to this uh, size profile. And same with, well, sometimes when it's slow, um, the bite's not really there, maybe going down to the small one would really impact it. No, still the same. Even during slow time frames, I would get hit more on that four inch paddle tail than even this little two and a half, three inch one and definitely more than this uh, five inch one. So that really taught me is like really just knowing that that size matters from small fish to big fish. And I can actually back that up because in regards to the pilchards I use for live baiting, which I do a lot, that medium size, medium, medium large I call it, that same profile size, maybe a little bit larger than this, works so much better than these late fall uh, huge finger mullet sized pilchards that I'm catching now. I have those both assorted and then I'll end up going through my bait bucket, picking out those smaller ones because I know those just get gobbled up where the big ones, a lot of times they just don't get eaten. Um, it's just the wrong size. The fish know what they're looking for and they want something like this. So just something I learned. The next item is this, the uh, Lawrence uh, fish finder slash GPS. Now this is kind of an odd review because the fish finder itself has not held up. I replace these every year to year and a half after the warranty expires after one year, unfortunately. Uh, they have not held up. Okay, a lot of uh, water intrusion, corrosion, they get that white screen and die. The salvaging point why I'm still with these guys after five years and six upgrades is because they have a what's called a out of warranty replacement. And that what happens is once you're out of warranty, then nobody repairs these things. But what they do to kind of keep your loyalty is they offer you a uh, refurbished one for an X amount of price. I think I roughly spend $130, $150 to get my damaged one replaced with a new refurbished one with I think like a six month warranty. And also the plus side of it as well is is that they'll replace it with whatever the current model is out there. So before I had before I had this one, I think it was the Elite 5, had a problem, it died, out of warranty, shipped it back, and then they sent me the Chirp, or the, the Hook 5, I think, or I went from the Chirp to the Hook 5. And because it even had a different style cable, they even sent me the cable because I had the older um, transducer for it. So it works out really well in that regards. <laughs> Uh, the units themselves I wish would last a little bit longer, uh, but with that extended warranty, a hint, if you have a buddy or if you have an old 
Lawrence uh, fish finder that's dead and is just not sure what to do with it, call up Lawrence, say you want to do a warranty or repair or a replacement on it and see what they'll offer you the uh, newer ones for that 130, 150 bucks. And then you get a brand new or refurbished new uh, with a six month warranty, newest updated model fish finder. And you're back in the game for a fraction of the price. Man, I am one electronic heavy guy there, but next review is this, my iPhone 7. Uh, yeah, there's newer up to the iPhone X right now, whatever. But I think the jump from the 6 to the 7, to the 7 here, is where they got to a point where the video quality and the photo quality and the zoom matched the average components out there, like specifically like the GoPros or even like the handheld cameras that I've got now, the DSLRs. The quality has gotten so good that your cell phone can now match that. I think up to the sevens, I think the sixes were borderline, the fives definitely not, but sevens definitely you could get rid of your DSLR and be fine with the quality that you get in regards to video and photos. And that's really helped me out in that I can get more on the fly video clips because I don't necessarily wanna carry my uh, GoPro around all the time and I just might want to drop into a tackle shop and take a video of something real quick. I could just throw it on the camera and know that it's going to be a seamless quality and it's not going to go all filmed on a potato style with the, using a cheap cell phone. So that's been a big plus, plus all the other stuff that you can do with your cell phone. I don't use those. I hate emails. I hate texting. I hate getting phone calls. I don't do editing on the fly videos to YouTube. I did a couple for the uh, during the hurricane, but yeah, other than that, just the video quality makes me happy. Okay, sticking with the camera theme again. Okay, this is kind of on a review on the Panasonic G7. Now, I picked this up uh, Christmas 2016. It had been out for already over a year when I got it. Um, excellent, excellent reviews. Uh, even to the top tier camera people, they said, yeah, this is a perfect substitute backup camera for my thousand, multiple thousand dollar cameras. So it's just, just such a great deal. I got a great price on it. It was on sale for basically $500. And then I got uh, two rebates for another instant rebates for $75 off. So I basically got it for $425 out the door deliver. Uh, even today, a year after I bought it, so it's been on the market for over two, coming on three years, and it's still being sold on sale for $6 for the base camera. It, it's just that popular. They're just selling so many of them. It's still a highly requested camera, even with basically three-year-old technology because it was built so well. It, it focused on just the things that are important. And like I said, plenty of people with those high dollar, multi-thousand dollar cameras say, yeah, they wouldn't think twice about buying this one as their backup camera in case their expensive camera failed. They have something that would give them the similar quality and majority of the, the time frames they need it. But it has worked out really well, specifically for my channel, for specifically these type of videos, the little talky talk inside the house, the catch and cooks and so forth where the GoPros and that fishbowl effect is just a little too odd for that. But uh, adding on the, a couple bucks for some microphones and get that audio up and it's just a, been a perfect add-on for my channel. Okay, so that's kind of my year-end product review in a nutshell. Uh, I was gonna say, well, I'm really not much of a gear junkie, but then seeing how much electronics that I have, I guess I do kind of uh, hoard the electronics side of it at least. Uh, fishing, I'm pretty streamlined. Um, I don't, I'm not a junk product hoarder type of thing, so I don't need a lot of stuff. I kind of streamline just the stuff that I need and that works. Um, I mentioned before, I'm not an iCast guy and I do have the ability to kind of cipher out the stuff that is made for catching fish versus stuff made to catch fishermen. But uh, anyways, I think this is a format that I might keep. I uh, kind of Maybe not just at the end of the year, maybe do a couple throughout the year, but basically pick up the things that I'm interested in trying, kind of let you guys see what I'm going to be using, and then give it a, a, a few months to actually test it out, to thoroughly review it, to see how it works, if it lasts, and so forth. 
and then just do a bunch of mixed up reviews all at a one shot video. So kind of keeps everything flowing. But anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.